And this is where we get that wisdom of when you open your eyes, you look around the world, you're only ever seeing yourself because the observer cannot be unlinked from that which is being observed because it is interpreted through the eyes of the beholder. And that beholder is in a state and that state filters the awareness of, of the observation. So anytime you open your eyes and you look around the world, you're only ever seeing yourself. And this explains that on a metaphysical level. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt. Daily Neville is all about breaking down the teachings of Neville Goddard, making them easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply in 20 minutes or less. Today, we are continuing with Neville's 1941 book titled, Your Faith is Your Fortune. And this is the third chapter, The Principle of Truth. We're going to dive right in here. Neville starts this chapter with a quote from John 8.32. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Neville writes, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The truth that sets man free is the knowledge that his consciousness is the resurrection and the life, that his consciousness both resurrects and makes alive all that he is conscious of being. Apart from consciousness, there is neither resurrection nor life. When man gives up his belief in a God apart from himself and begins to recognize his awareness of being to be God, as did Jesus and the prophets, he will transform his world with the realization, I and my Father are one, but my Father is greater than I. He will know that his consciousness is God, and that which he is conscious of being is the Son bearing witness of God the Father. The conceiver and the conception are one, but the conceiver is greater than his conception. Before Abraham was I am. Yes, I was aware of being before I became aware of being man. And in that day when I shall cease to be conscious of being man, I shall still be conscious of being. Consciousness of being is not dependent upon being anything. It preceded all conceptions of itself and shall be when all conceptions of itself shall cease to be. I am the beginning and the end. That is, all things or conceptions of myself begin and end in me. But I, the formless awareness, remain forever. We're going to start there. I and my Father are one, but my Father is greater than I. My awareness of being is God. My awareness of being is greater than that which it is aware of being. So my awareness of being is greater than the man that I currently am aware of being. The conceiver is greater than the conception made by the conceiver. Source consciousness is greater than the part that it is playing. The actor is greater than the character that the actor is playing because the actor can actually play more than one character at different times. The actor is capable of playing more than one character. But the actor is choosing to play a character. So the actor is greater than the character, but the character is still one with the actor. Before Abraham was, I am. So Abraham, in this case, refers to the idea of human beings. Before the idea of human beings entered the mind of God, I am. I am is that ceaseless, formless, eternal, infinite existence that continues. Far beyond the tiny, little, fraction, slice of time experienced, housed, in a body of mortal flesh. I was aware of being before I became aware of being man. And in that day, when I shall cease to be conscious of being man, I shall still continue being conscious. I shall still have consciousness of being, just maybe not of being man. Continuing with Neville's words, 
Jesus discovered this glorious truth and declared himself to be one with God, not the God that man had fashioned, for he never recognized such a God. Jesus found God to be his awareness of being, and so told man that the kingdom of God and heaven were within. Kingdom of heaven is within you. Just as all things are within each one of us, the deeper layer of our being. Neville continues, when it is recorded that Jesus left the world and went to his father, it is simply stating that he turned his attention from the world of the senses and rose in consciousness to that level which he desired to express. There he remained until he became one with the consciousness to which he ascended. When he returned to the world of man, he could act with the positive assurance of that which he was conscious of being. A state of consciousness no one but himself felt or knew that he possessed. Man who is ignorant of this everlasting law of expression looks upon such happenings as miracles. So when you don't understand and you're not aware of the everlasting law of expression, and that is that we constantly form our worlds and ourselves after or in the image and likeness of our conceptions of ourselves, when we're ignorant of that, we look at things like switching states of beings as being miracles, these happenings as being miracles. But when we are aware of this changeless immortal law, we understand exactly what is happening when people switch states they're changing their conceptions of themselves. And so naturally, their world that they are out picturing, we make our worlds in the image and likeness of our concepts of ourselves. So change the conception, change the world. To rise in consciousness to the level of the thing desired and to remain there until such level becomes your nature is the way of all seeming miracles. And I, if I be lifted up, I shall draw all men unto me. If I be lifted up in consciousness to the naturalness of the thing desired, I shall draw the manifestation of that desire to me. No man comes unto me, save the Father within me draws him, and I and my Father are one. My consciousness is the Father who draws the manifestations of life to me. The nature of the manifestation is determined by the state of consciousness in which I dwell. I am always drawing into my world that which I am conscious of being. And this is where we get that wisdom of when you open your eyes and you look around the world, you're only ever seeing yourself because the observer cannot be unlinked from that which is being observed because it is interpreted through the eyes of the beholder. And that beholder is in a state and that state filters the awareness of, of the observation. So anytime you open your eyes and you look around the world, you're only ever seeing yourself. And this explains that on a metaphysical level. I'm always drawing into my world what I'm conscious of being. If you are dissatisfied with your present expression of life, then you must be born again. Rebirth is the dropping of that level with which you are dissatisfied, and rising to that level of consciousness which you desire to express and possess. You cannot serve two masters or two opposing states of consciousness at the same time. Taking your attention from one state and placing it upon the other, you die to the one from which you have taken it, and you live and express the one with which you are united. So Neville's explaining these really integral parts of scripture that have been interpreted a lot of other ways or were perhaps mysterious in their interpretation. He's explaining how this is actually revealing to you the code of source. This is how manifestations happen. And it's literally, you, you have to assume a state and you can't assume two states. You can only ever be in one state. You can't be up and down, it's or left and right. Like it, you you have to choose and reside in a state, and then that state is what outpictures itself. 
man cannot see how it would be possible to express that which he desires to be by so simple a law as acquiring the consciousness of the thing desired. The reason for this lack of faith on the part of man is that he looks at the desired state through the consciousness of his present limitations. Therefore, he naturally sees it as impossible of accomplishment. Another way of saying this is that if you're in a current state, achieving the results of another state are impossible to you until you move states. So it is impossible for you to have that thing that you desire while you remain in the consciousness of not having it. This is why you always move the energy first before you attempt to move the matter. Attempting to move the matter before changing your consciousness or moving states is a futile readjustment of surfaces. It's one of my favorite Neville quotes, the futile readjustment of surfaces. You can rearrange things on the outside, but they're not actually reflecting a true change of consciousness unless you have moved states. Neville writes, one of the first things man must realize is that it is impossible in dealing with this spiritual law of consciousness to put new wine into old bottles or new patches on old garments. That is, you cannot take any part of the present consciousness into the new state. For the state sought is complete in itself and needs no patching. Every level of consciousness automatically expresses itself. How many times do we attempt to mend something rather than accepting a new whole? W-H-O-L-E, a new whole. How many times do we try to mend a whole, H-O-L-E, in an old garment rather than accepting a brand new whole garment, W-H-O-L-E? To rise to the level of any state is to automatically become that state in expression. But in order to rise to the level that you are not now expressing, you must completely drop the consciousness with which you are now identified. Until your present consciousness is dropped, you will not be able to rise to another level. Do not be dismayed. This letting go of your present identity is not as difficult as it might appear to be. The invitation of the scriptures to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord is not given to a select few. It is a sweeping call to all mankind. The body from which you are invited to escape is your present conception of yourself with all of its limitations, while the Lord with whom you are to be present is your awareness of being. To accomplish this seemingly impossible feat, you must take your attention away from your problem and place it upon just being. Say that again. To accomplish this seemingly impossible feat of laying down the old state that you may embody the new, you must first take your attention away from your problem and place it on just being. This is reconnecting to source consciousness, to your original awareness of being. And Neville gives you a recipe for this. He says, you say silently and feelingly, I am. I am. I am. Do not condition this awareness, meaning don't bring any identity into it or try to be something yet. Just continue declaring quietly, I am. I am. Simply feel that you are faceless, formless, and continue doing so until you feel yourself floating. Floating is a psychological state which completely denies the physical. Through practice and relaxation and willfully refusing to react to sensory impressions, it is possible to develop a state of consciousness of pure receptivity. Essentially, this is a reboot. You loaded a program, you don't want to use that program anymore. It's the old state. And you're doing a reboot, formatting, reinstalling, 
and the new installation is of a new software program or a new state of being. And this act of rebooting and reinstalling is an act of refreshing. And this refreshing is an act of reconnecting to your original source awareness, your original state of being, your simple, I am faceless, formless, simple, pure, unconditioned, eternal awareness. And as you connect to that, you're absent from the body and present with the Father until you become one with the Father. And that's this state called floating. It is a surprisingly easy accomplishment, Neville says. In this state of complete detachment, a definite singleness of purposeful thought can be indelibly engraved upon your unmodified consciousness. This state of consciousness is necessary for true meditation. This wonderful experience of rising and floating is the signal that you are absent from the body or problem and are now present with the Lord. In this expanded state, you are not conscious of being anything but I am. I am. I am. You are only conscious of being. When this expansion of consciousness is attained within this formless deep of yourself, then give form to the new conception by claiming and feeling yourself to be that which you, before you entered into this state, desired to be. You will find that within this formless deep of yourself, all things appear to be divinely possible. Anything that you sincerely feel yourself to be, while in this expanded state, becomes in time your natural expression. This is adopting a new state of being. You are releasing and letting go of the old state or taking off the old man. And you're putting on the new man, new manifestation, the new consciousness, the new state of being by completely releasing the old. And when you do so and you become one with this new state, it becomes in time your natural expression. You naturally begin to express this new state of being. Now, this is not the end of this chapter, but it is the end of this episode. And the next episode, we will continue and finish, conclude this chapter by going deeper into this idea of discarding the old, the old state of being, the old state of awareness, the old man, and acquiring the new, embodying the new, achieving residency in our new desired state of being by passing through this reboot, this refresh, this reconnection to our original, unconditioned state of awareness of being, the I am. Until next time, there's really only one thing to do. And you know what it is. Imagine wisely, my friends. And I'll see you in the next. 